Oh boy, I'm live. Hello? Hello. How do I... How do I do this? There we go. Okay. Scoop de poop de whoop. Scoop it de poop de poop. Oh, there are people. Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm getting this set up, so excuse me while I'm uh, I'm configuring things. Haven't done one of these in a while. Um, all right, doing that, doing that. <laughs> oh, double post, cool. Um, all right, I guess that's it. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Cool, okay. So I've put my I've put my links everywhere that I need to put them. Um, I don't know why my webcam looks so bad. Everything looks very blown out. Oh well, whatever. There we go. So what's up, guys? Ed here, hanging out. I'm uh, very sleep deprived. I got three hours of sleep last night, and I'm currently working on uh, GBWC stuff, um, and I felt like streaming, so I haven't done one of these in a while, um, and I completely, I actually completely forgot the last time that I did stream, and I don't actually remember what I talked about while I was streaming, so hello, hi, hello people. Um, yes, hi. Oh, apparently I was in a Discord call by myself because it just signed me out of one. So what's up, guys? Um, I, uh, you know, there's oh, a couple, wow, a couple of people joined, six people. Wow, we got six people in here. Cool, cool. Um, so I guess I'll talk about my week uh, a little bit. So a lot of you guys know I was on Tested recently, Adam Savage's YouTube channel. And that was dope. Uh, it was very cool meeting Norm and uh, talking about Gunpla and doing that fun stuff um, with him. It was very cool to uh, experience being on a YouTube show channel thing that I actually have watched a lot of in the past. Um, I really love Adam Savage and I love Tested. So that was like really cool to be on there. Um, it was really funny because I actually I didn't know it was uh, I didn't know it was tested until <laughs> he started filming. So if you if you watch the video um, when when he gets on there and he's just like, "Hey, uh, Norm here with tested," my eyes are like, <laughs> you, you see them bulge up a little bit because um, I didn't recognize Norm because I don't watch a lot of the Norm stuff. Uh, I've watched a, like a bunch, but I just it didn't click in my head that it was him. Um, I watch a lot of the uh, the Adam the Adam episodes, so I was kind of like, oh shit, like you're <laughs> you're the other guy I forgot about. Oh shit. Um, but I thought it was uh, I thought it was really fun. It was cool. It was a really cool uh, really cool chance to uh, meet somebody that appreciates Gunpla and you know weird little nerdy things like that. Um, 
So if you guys have any questions for me about literally anything, uh, this is usually where I answer them. Um, I'm too lazy to make like Q&A videos because I'm too lazy to make regular videos. So uh, if you have any questions, now would be the time to ask. But the question I get the most is how I do my rivets. Because <laughs> people always want to know how I do like my riveting stuff on my, uh, my Steam Engine guys. So if there's any questions other than the rivets, because, well, I mean, I guess I could answer the rivet question. But um, I'm also drinking, so be warned. Um, yeah. So tested was cool. Um, I guess I'll talk about some other stuff. Um, how how did you get into gunpla? Oh man, that's a fun story. Um, <laughs> uh, how did I get into gunpla? Three viewers just left. Um, <laughs> Uh, I got into Gunpla when I was about, I think I was I was 14. Yeah, yeah, I was 14, so it was 10 years ago. Um, and I loved the action figures. I collected a lot of the Gundam action figures, like the MSAs and stuff. Um, and I, still, I still collect a lot of the action figures. And I still collect Gundam stuff in general, other than the model kits. If you can see behind me, that's all just like my me and my girlfriend's Gundam collection back there. Um, but it, it, I was 14 and I hated the idea of building a model kit. I thought it was like the worst thing in the world. Like I thought it was so stupid. Um, I was like, I don't have the time to do that. Like I don't, I don't like have the effort. Like I don't have the mental energy to like ever do anything like that. Um, and I again, I, I collected the MSAs, and there's this flea market that I used to go to with my mom all the time. Because um, when I was 14, my parents split up, and we moved out to this apartment. And we were uh, looking for like furniture and like small things for the apartment that we moved into. And um, there was a toy like booth thing there, and this guy always had like imported toys. And I thought it was so cool because he always had like MSAs and he had a lot of like Transformers figures from Japan that I really liked and I ended up buying a lot of them off of him. Um, but whenever he had Gundam figures, I always bought the Gundam figures off of him because I was kind of like just getting into Gundam and I was like, these things are really cool. Like I'm going to buy a bunch. Um, and I remember like I bought, I bought the Sazabi off of him. I bought the Gyan. Um, I bought, uh, I bought a couple other ones. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but I think I bought the Gundam off of them. I think I bought the ground type, just different things like that. Um, and he eventually just like ran out of Gundam stuff and it sucked because I had money to burn and I wanted to buy something. So I ended up walking around the, uh, the flea market and I found a box that had a wing Gundam on it. And I was like, Oh, like a wing Gundam. Uh, hey, what's up, Dave? Um, the wing on them, and I was, I was like, okay, like, that's cool. Like, you know, I'll buy this. And it was like $5. And then under it was, was like a really old looking Zaku. And I was like, okay, fuck it. I'll buy these. And they must be cool. Or like, this one must be like an old toy or something. And I got them both for like five bucks or something. And I went to my mom's car to wait for her. And I was sitting on the trunk waiting for my mom to like be done with her shopping. And I opened the wing on them box and it was a kit. And I was like, fuck, like, I want to build this, like, I don't want to build a model kit, like, I was so, like, opposed to the idea of building something, and I was like, nah, like, screw this, like, I don't, I don't, like, care about this, like, whatever, um, so I, like, waited and waited and waited for her, and then I called her, and I'm like, hey, like, when are we leaving, like, I'm bored, and she's just like, oh, like, I'm in line, like, talking to this guy, like, I'm gonna be a while, so, like, sorry if you're bored, and she left me on the back of the you know, the, the, her trunk just kind of waiting for her. And like, I kind of putzed around for a couple minutes. And then eventually I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to put this thing together. So I I started like pulling the parts off of the runners and I started, you know, putting it together. And, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes later, I had a really poorly built wing on them and I fell in love with it. Like instantly I was like, this is so cool. Cause like I made this, like, this is the coolest thing ever. 
So I built the Gundam, and on the way home, I kept talking to my mom about it. I'm like, look at it. Like, it's so cool, because, like, it's not like all the other action figures. It's because it's, I put it together. It's mine. And I remember, like, I put it up on, like, my fridge and my cabinets, and I, like, flew it around. And I, I had, like, so much fun with it. Um, and I was so happy with it. And I, I just I fell in love with it. Um, I tried building the Zaku. And the Zaku is, like, one of the old glue kits. And I was like, oh, I can't do this one. Um, so uh, I had a friend in uh, high school, and he was older than I was. His name was Joe. And I knew he liked Gundam because I had seen him with, like, Gundam action figures in school before. And I was like, hey, like, do you know how to put the models together? And he's like, yeah, like, that's a glue one. Like, I've put them together before. And I was like, okay, can you put it together for me? So he ended up, like, gluing it together for me. And it eventually it just turned into a test model. I, like, just sprayed it with, like, random paint to, like, test different colors and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, D Dave, you remember. Um, when I When I, like, really started getting into Gunpla... Um, when I was, like, really younger, when I was, like, 15, 16, because that's when I started my YouTube channel. I started, like, making videos. And, uh, like, every kit I got was, like, it was, like, God's gift to me. It was, it was like, the coolest thing. I remember when I got, like, a Master Grade Perfect Gundam uh, from Gundam Store More, and I was, like, freaking out because I, I became, like, one of their gold card members. I was, like, this is the coolest thing ever. Oh, my God. Like, I can't believe that I'm, like, building these. Um, and it was just, it was so cool because it was like, it was so magical to me. Like, and it still is. It, it was like, it was the coolest thing because I loved, I loved building stuff and I loved making stuff as a kid, but like, I had never found anything like Gundam before. And even though I didn't really know the series of the show, I just, I fell in love with it so hard. Um, and I, I like to think that that love kind of like never went away because I'm still like, every time I finish a model, I'm like always really like proud of it and really happy with it. Most of the time. Um, so that was how I got into Gundam. I accidentally bought one, and it tricked me into loving it forever. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, uh, that was it. Um, let's see, how did I get into Gundam? I don't know, any good idea on what train model I can kick bash with high-grade RX-78? Um, uh... Depends if you want to do like steam or diesel. Um, if it's a steam engine, just find like find like a dummy, like one that isn't an actual like motorized N gauge engine. Um, I've got, this is all my like junk like train parts. Um, the cool thing is they make they make trains in so many different sizes. Um, yeah, just like go to your local store. Find like an N-gauge thing like this. Like this is the body shell of an N-gauge like locomotive that I was going to use for Steam Siege last year, but I ended up not using it. Um, and find like cheap N-gauge stuff that like doesn't work. Make sure it doesn't work because if you find a uh, an N-gauge locomotive or like any kind of locomotive at a store, um, usually like train stores they will sell used junkers for stupidly cheap because they don't work, and they don't want to bother with fixing them, so they're like, oh, like, take this engine for $10, if you can make it work, it's yours. And, yeah, just buy, like, cheap body shells and try something like that. Some, some in N-Gage. Um, N-Gage works really well with high grades. Last year, I used a uh, NHO gauge on Jupiter, or not Jupiter, um, Hercules, which was, like, my big uh, steam engine bot from GBWC. And the only reason I used that one was because um, I used a comfort chest or camper, and the chest was like really big, so it fit the HO plate. Oh, we got more people coming in. Welcome everybody to my mediocre Gunpla stream, where I'm talking and answering questions about random shit. Um, let's see. Have you tried any of the MIG ammo filters or paints for Yes, uh, I swear by MIG. Um, I'm actually friends with the guy on Facebook. Um, he's a cool dude. But, yeah. These are all... This is a lot of my weathering stuff. Um, all of these bottles here are MIG products. These first three rows. Um, it, smells, it smells like oil paint. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I use a lot of the uh, the rust washes. And I use a lot of, like, the... Uh, I use a couple... I, I use some of the pigments. Not a lot of the time, but... Um, sometimes, 
I will try stuff with them. But I use a lot of the mud and the rust and the grime. I, I like the green grime washes. Um, I use the green a lot for just blending and stuff. And then I, ha I have a couple like um, I have a couple uh, aircraft washes which are like dark gray. I don't know if I can find them in here. Um, yeah, there there is one that I'm really excited about trying, and I picked it up at uh, I picked this up at Mosquito Con last year, and it's a it's a moss deposit thing. Oh god, I'm getting a Skype call. Um, it's a moss deposit thing. So when you put it on stuff, it it looks like um, moss. That's cool. I'm 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 really excited to use this. I'm actually going to be using this on my GBWC build this year. So. That will be cute. Um, so yes, I love Meg. Meg is awesome. They make amazing products. And if I was ever sponsored by like a uh, a painting company or like a like a weathering thing, I would love to be sponsored by Meg because they're I use their products probably more than anything. Um, let's see. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Is there a link somewhere to join the Discord server? Um. Yeah, yeah, I think Backsup just gave you one, but yeah, you can join the. Uh, there's a link on my like my Facebook page, um, I think. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, I think I think that's still on there, so you can go join that if you want. But yeah, come hang out. Um, I think the Discord's fun. It's fun to uh, it's fun to do voice chats. Mostly, most of the time, like, I mean, we do we do voice chats and they're like every day. Um, something like that. But yeah, feel free to join. Come hang out in the uh, the madness. It's not it's not that bad of a server, I don't think. Um, yeah, Vallejo does make some cool stuff that I've been meaning to try out. I just haven't yet. <laughs> There's so many products and like so many things to try out, and so little, so little time. So if you have any more, if any of you guys have any uh, questions about anything, just let me know, and I will answer them. But, um, yeah, I guess um, I guess I'll talk about my GBWC project a little bit because I've been like posting on Facebook, but I haven't like talked about it a little. Um, so I am doing uh, another Steam Engine Gundam guy, and this year it's a samurai theme. And I'll show him off right now. He doesn't have all of his parts on him, but this is the uh, the samurai guy. And uh, yeah, he doesn't have his side skirts or uh, the backpack's not finished, but that's like the main body uh, right now. He's got his little wheelie feet. Do, 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 do. He's a he's a good boy. Um, so that's like the main body, and then um. I'm building, or I have built, I gotta paint it still. Uh, this is like one of the Japanese flags that the samurai have on their backpack sort of things. And there's a slot on his backpack where it's gonna plug in. So he's gonna be like that, sort of. The flag on there. And I've got a couple designs that I've been throwing around that I'm gonna pick um, for what I'm gonna put on it. I'm not sure 100% yet, but i sketched a couple of things, um, and I'm going to decide on one of them, and then I'm going to hand paint that. Um, and currently, I'm working on this, which is going to be kind of like a Federation cross. And I think he's either going to be holding it, or this is going to be like embedded in the diorama somewhere. But I have all these Zaku heads, and this is a goof head, but... Um, I'm working on like battle scarring them and, uh, they're going to have like pipes leaking out of their face and they're just, they're going to be like decapitated heads and they're all going to be hanging on this thing like this kind of something like that. So I don't, I don't know about all that yet. And, uh, I'm sculpting a little samurai guy, which I haven't gotten too far on yet. Can you tell who it is by the hair? <laughs> um, so there's that. And... I actually haven't showed any really of this off yet, but this is the tree that I've been working on. Um, really hard to see in the lighting, but um, he's going to be standing here, and this is going to be a, uh, a giant cherry blossom tree. And I'm only half done with the sculpting on it. Um, I've got to add a lot more 
uh, spackle to like the little branches. And I've got actually got to add a lot of more little branches on here, but I've been studying how to uh, build trees this year. So I was really excited to kind of take a whack at it. You kind of see like on the base when the shadows off. Yeah. I've like, I've sculpted a bunch of like roots um, and stuff like that. And he's going to kind of go in this like flat area here. So that's that. Um, I don't think I have any other parts of him to show off yet. I really don't. Um, he's kind of in a lot of pieces right now. Um, yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. I hope it's incredible. I hope it inspires someone to make their own train Gundams at GBWC. Oh, so it's Friday. I'm running on three hours of sleep. I feel great. <laughs> uh, let's see. What should I talk about? Um, oh, Comic-Con. I guess I'll talk about that a little bit. Comic-Con was awesome. Uh, I loved working with Bluefin and Bandai. Um, and I think we're going to do the same thing at Anime NYC. I'm not 100% sure. But... Um, I really hope that we do. I know for a fact that I'll be working there with Bluefin, even if we don't do the Gundam thing. So um, I will be there again with uh, my my friends doing doing stuff. Um, they're I think what they're doing is they're putting me in the um, the the buying area, and I'm gonna like talk to people about Gunpla and like help them with their purchases or something like that. I think they mentioned like they're I'm gonna be doing that when it's like not class time. Um, so I'll be there a lot, and I will also, uh, be there for GBWC, which is at, uh, Anime NYC this year instead of NYCC, which is nice because it gives us a month to, uh, to do stuff, and I'm pretty much doing everything in a month, so, um, <laughs> uh, any online Gundam selling sites you can recommend? Um... <laughs> Uh, I honestly don't buy Gunpla online. <laughs> uh, I haven't bought Gunpla uh, not in person in, I think, like four years now, five years now. Um, I, I, well, okay, that, that's not fair. I, um, I buy clear kits and like exclusives online. Um, I have a couple friends in Japan that like, oh, hey, hey, goof. <laughs> um, I have a couple Gundam uh, friends in Japan that, um, help me uh with like getting uh tokyo or gunpla tokyo gunpla base exclusives and all that stuff um i also have a couple friends that help me get like p bandai stuff if i need it um but for the most part like normal retail kits i i don't buy them online because it's just it's not worth it to get them shipped to me um it's it, it, it's like Okay, so I, I used to live in New York, uh, upstate New York, and there was no Gundam stores anywhere around me. And I moved to uh, Pen Eastern Pennsylvania, and there are so many stores around here that carry Gunpla. Um, not, you know, not even talking about like uh, Barnes and Noble and stuff. I'm talking about like just like stores that carry kits. Um, there's a store not even five minutes away from where I work that has like one of the largest Gunpla like stocks that I've ever seen um, <laughs> in, in like a small store. Uh, they get all the new kits. They get new stuff as soon as it comes out um, and they charge yen price for it, which is really cool. Um, and again, it's like right down the road for me. So if it's like, I'm like, hmm, I'm kind of in the mood to like go get the, like last year when um, all those kits dropped that came out that I was like really excited about, like the um, the Barzam, which was kind of a disappointment. Um, the Free, which was also kind of eh. Um, but I was like really excited to get them and I would just pick them up there because they got them for, again, yen price. So uh, I buy all my kits either from there or Gundam Planet. Um, and if Gundam Planet, you know, if I need something like really fast, I just have it shipped to my apartment or whatever. 
and uh, have it taken care of that way. And yeah, so I, I bought from Gun and Planet a lot. Um, that's pretty much where I get all like my main like kit stock from. Like I go to uh, if I want something new, I go to Image Anime or I go down the street to the shop that's by my work. If I want something like if I need a bunch of old stuff or I need to like stock up, I go to Gundam Planet because like Gundam Planet's where I go and I buy like ten gyms at a time. Um, and Gundam Planet gets P Bandai stuff too sometimes, so I go there. Um, and uh, I used to buy from Gundam Store more all the time when I lived upstate, and I miss them so much. Um, I honestly, I, 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 uh, Hobby Wave, I used to buy from Hobby Wave all the time and Hobby Wave is gone. So a- anywhere that I used to buy from is literally gone. Um, Amazon and eBay and eBay school because, um, uh, Mandarake has an eBay store and you can buy model kits off of, uh, Mandarake on their eBay store, which is really dope. Um, so if I want like a P Bandai thing and they say it's used, it just means the box is like a little banged up. Um, which I don't really give a shit about. So uh I buy like P Bandai stuff on there sometimes and it's like, oh, like thirty dollars in free shipping. It's like, oh, I'll take that. Um so there, Amazon. Amazon like it's like really weird stuff every once in a while. Um they got a a clear F91 high grade, like randomly in stock, like a couple months ago, and I bought one because I was like, "This, why is this like showing up now?" It was like twenty bucks, so I bought that. Um, where else online do I buy? Um, oh god, there's like a lot of messages. Um, Central PA, getting better. Local store, actually met you. Localish store owner actually met you at NYCC. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I remember you. Um, Ray, please leave. Um, yeah, I miss Hobby Wave too. Hobby Hobby Wave was so cool because like Hobby Wave was where I got like all my paint. Well, no, no, no. It wasn't where I got my paint. I got a lot of my paint from Gundam Planet. Um, but when I when I used to buy stuff online, that was where I got my paint, my primer, and like my decals, and just you know a random kit here and there. Um, but I miss it. Rest in peace. It's really sad because like I've I've like heard really really good things and like really horrible things about um, USA Gundam Store, so I'm kind of like apprehensive about buying from them because i've just heard so many like weird things but again i don't really like have a need to buy online anymore anyway so it doesn't really matter um but yeah uh amazon occasionally has like cool rare stuff that i'll buy um every once in a while um something i'm really excited about building i'll go get it um and i have a wireless headset so you guys can hear me as i leave um i when GBWC is done, I think I'm gonna do like a little video on these. So I'm get them out. Ugh. I had a friend um, in Japan pick me this up when it got released. It's the uh, the Clear Double O high grade set that they sold at Gundam Base, and I love Clear kits um, as like a little novelty items. I I really love them. Um, they're just they're fun, and I collect Gundam stuff. So uh, stuff like that is like really cool to me. Um, now I have to try to fit it back in my closet. There we go. So my kids are. <laughs> yeah, I love like the little Gundam base exclusive stuff. I think all that's like really cool. But yeah, I want to do like I just want to do some like little build videos where I'm like putting together clear kits and stuff. Um, yeah, I thought it was really cool. The resin dress up for the PG. Oh, which uh, which resin dress up? I, I've I've seen a couple of them. Um, 
but there's like there's so many resin kits nowadays I can't keep track of them all. Ah, <sighs> I am tired. How how you know what? Enough of me talking. How was your guys' week? What did you guys do? I just had a long week because I'm tired and I'm like training people at work and I'm just I'm tired. But yeah, I've uh, I've had a couple like cool things in my backlog that I really want to like do. Um, well, I'll I'll show I'll show a couple things off that I'm excited about if I can find them if if I can dig them out. Um. Oh yeah, God, oh, these. <laughs> I'm really excited to do these. Um. These are those uh. This P Bandai MSV high grade Gundams, the uh, the goof, the Gundam, and the gun cannon in the MSV colors with the decals, and I wouldn't have bought these except they all come with water slides, and I think the box art is like dope as heck. So, uh, really excited to build those. Um, I've got some 7-Eleven kits. I've got some Eco Plot kits that I don't think I'm gonna build, but I want to do them. Uh Dynamis, I got a one one hundred Dynamis that I gotta build. And I got some like I got some like really old resin kits that I wanna put together. Um and I really wanna do uh I really wanna build my Saikami Uzaku. And I wanna kit bash it with a high grade and make it like H D U C Boop a doop a doo Maniac Studios. Hmm. Sounds kind of cool. Ugh. Allergies have been bothering me. Yeah, I uh, I don't have allergies, but I'm allergic to like freezing temperatures. So I I don't really like uh, I don't really like how uh, the weather's been. It's been like 35 degrees every morning. And I just want to stay home. I'm so glad it's Friday. I'm so tired. I, I, I like sleep. Sleep is just so great. <laughs> like, I just love sleeping. But that's just because I'm a lazy shit. I've also like gotten, I think, like four hours of sleep every night this week from staying up and working on this uh, this project, trying to get it done. But anyway, um, I, uh, I, I think anybody who's in the area should definitely come out to Anime NYC next month. Um, it's a lot of fun. And you get these, which are the cool... Um, these are the cool promo kits that we give out. And uh, technically, they're rare because you can't take them from the booth unless you start building them. So finding them unbuilt is very rare. And David, let me take one. <laughs> um, let's see. We've got comments. Uh, I worked like crazy this week. Bought a new truck for work. Nice, nice. Clean it. Uh, oh, Masquerade Stormbringer. Nice. I uh, I really want Masquerade Stormbringer. That thing looks so cool. And uh, what Naoki did to it, uh, his looks like like i want i want one even more now since uh Naoki got one and he i think he designed it I, I don't know he he has one and he painted it and it looks heavenly and i really want it i want the kit and i want his <laughs> um you know let me just putty up this head do, 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 do. Putty is so smelly, but I don't care. This would probably be more entertaining if I had, like, a guest with me or something, or someone to, like, fill the awkward silence that I leave when I'm, like, puttying shit, but, oh, well, no, oh, don't stick together, don't do that. <laughs> I 
Your dreams are smashed from no releases of Massacre from the Dual Series. Yeah, it's, uh... I don't think it's happening, buddy. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd love a Massacre of Dynamis, too, but I'm I'm satisfied with the 1 to 100 scale. You know, at least we have we have 1 to 100 scales of all the 00 stuff, so you can make your own Master Grade, which is nice. You just don't have, like, the inner frame or whatever, but who cares? Uh, uh working all week, working this weekend. Um <laughs> yeah, yeah, the uh, the Damashi GPO one. So uh I think it was like Tuesday night. I was up all night working. I literally like I stayed up all night working on this project and um I was watching Stardust because I haven't seen Stardust in a while so I was like alright screw it like I'll watch this. Um, and I'm like watching it and you can't see them from here, but up here I have, maybe you can find this back a little bit. Oh yeah, there you go. I have all, these are all, uh, uh, MSIAs and I have a bunch of the, uh, Stardust memory ones over in that corner. And, um, I was looking at them and I was like, man, like, I'm so sad that like they never released that, uh, GPO one that a, uh, they they teased like what was it like five years ago or something like that, and I was really upset because I, I I remember when that like teaser came out and I was like oh my god like I'm so happy, and then I never released it and then literally two days later they were like guess what Stardust fans here you go here's uh here's GPO one and I was like yeah so I'm really happy about that I'm really happy that I produced that and the fu the funny thing is like. I've like I've done these like weird callouts before where I'm like I hope that gets made and then it gets made like a week later. <laughs> oh god, excuse me. Uh, um, I did that with the uh, the high grade avalanche when that got announced. Um, I was like I bet they're gonna make one of these and then like a week later they made it. So, um, uh. Let's see. What else? Um, do I have any ver anime Damashis? Um, yes, I have uh, mm, five, I think. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I have a. Uh, I have most of my Gundam stuff in here. Um, but my MSA or sorry, yeah, my MSA collection and all of my robot Tamashis are in my living room on display on this like really big detolf because they're not detolf, a Billy from IKEA because I have so many of them. Um, I I, I collect the uh, not just the MSAs but the uh, the Tamashis. So I have a shelf of um, like I have it. I have it kind of organized by like. Late UC, early UC, and then like at the bottom is like non UC, and then I have one that's like uh, all my like metal composite Damashis because I have like the uh, the metal build double O or not the metal build double O the metal composite double O Damashi, and then I've got like the Katoki um, C Gundam, uh, some other stuff. I've got uh, I've got the Unicorn Girls. I guess those are technically Damashis. Um, so I've got those, and, oh, hey, hey, Kat, yeah, of course I remember you. <laughs> I was talking about BOCES the other day, um, to a friend of mine, because I, I was going through a bunch of my old Facebook photos, um, from my old Facebook account, and, because I deleted one of them, and I was looking through all my files, and I was talking about how much I missed, like, the crew and everything, so yeah, yeah, I remember you, um, yeah. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, anyway, the Damashis. Um, the anime Damashis. I I have um, I have the Gundam, like the the classic Gundam, um, the full armor Gundam, the prototype Gundam, um, and I have the uh, the real type color Zaku, which was the exclusive one from. Uh, the Tamashi Nations event in 2017, 16. I can't remember what year it was. Um, but I waited in line for like 
three hours for that thing and they sold out of it and I ended up having to buy it off of a friend that bought a duplicate of it. Um, and I love that thing. The, the real type Zaku is like one of my favorite. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get it because I love it so much. I love it and I want to show it to you guys because I'm really proud that I found it. Let's see, where is he? Oh, he's, he's over there. Ugh, shit it. Ah, there we go. Okay. I'll uh, I I don't know if you can like link photos in the chat, but I would love to take a photo and show you guys. Here he is. Yeah, I love this guy. Um, a little dusty, but it's the it's everybody knows what the real type color Zaku looks like. Um, but that's him, and I I forget how much I paid for it, but I love it. I love this thing. It's my favorite it's kind of Zaku. Um, ironically, earlier when I was talking about uh the first kits that I ever got, the um. The first Zaku that I ever got was the original uh, real type Zaku, the 1 100 one. And I have the box art somewhere, and I love the box art for that thing. And the Damashi is cool because the Damashi had a bunch of like vintage, vintage art on it and everything. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Um, let's see. Uh, Zeta Damashi, and what do you think of the Nimetable Crossbones? Um, I, have, I have a lot of Zeta Damashis. Um, I have the Zeta Gundam, and before you murder me, um, I really don't like the Zeta that much. <laughs> um, I think the design's kind of overrated, and so is the show. But, I mean, I don't dislike it, don't get me wrong. I don't dislike the Zeta at all, but I don't think it's, like, the best thing in the world. Um, but, yes, I have the Damashi. The Damashi is gorgeous. Um, I love that you can do, like, the, the bee binder thing. Um and I have that. I have the Mark II. Mark II is one of my favorite Gundams. Um, I love that. Um, I love the Mark II. Mark II is a cool design. And actually, I have the Mark II, and then I have the P or Web Shop, uh, the Super Pack. So right now, it's it's displayed as the Super Gundam with the the big backpack thing. Um, I can't remember what else was in Zeta that I own. I have the Capool, but that was Turn A. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I thought of that. Uh, I have, oh, I have. I can't remember what other Zeta ones I have. I have a lot of unicorn ones. I think I have all the unicorn ones. I've got like one of the old like web shop like green frame unicorns, the uh, the glowy psycho frame one. Um, I think it might be for. Z oh, I have double Zeta. The double Zeta Damashi is so cool. Oh man, that thing is so dope. Um, big chunker boy. Um, comes with a really cool gun. Uh, cool shit. I can't remember like what other Damashis I have in there. Um, uh, but yeah, anyway, I have a lot. <laughs> um, what do you think of the new metal cross ones? Um, I, as much as a crossbone fan that I am, um. I don't like them that much. I mean, I like them, don't get me wrong, but I don't really like the gold. Um, I think it's, like, too much gold in there. Um, not, like, too much, but I like it I like it better on the, the, the Dash 1. And um, the Dash 2 is, like, eh. But um, I like them. I will be buying definitely the X1, um, but I'm not sure about the X2. Uh, so, I like them. <laughs> um, let's see. How much wood? How much wood can a woodchuck chuck a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> Three. Three. <laughs> what do you think about the GPO two five cells? Um, the the suit or like the the figure? Um, I don't know. I don't know what you mean. Like the the mobile suit because I like I like the GPO two GPO two is cool. Um, fun fact: the most owned item in almost my entire Gundam collection is the GPO two because I owned six MSIAs of it at one time and I have no idea why. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, my girlfriend's messaging me. She's buying foam for GBWC stuff. Cool. 
Um, hey. <laughs> oh, where's the YouTube tab? I don't know. There it is. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, kicking the ZZ for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, it. I don't want to go get mine because it's like kind of in the back of one of my shelves. But the the double Zeta is like. I mean, like I like the double Zeta design. I don't like the like the master grade design of it, but I like it in general. Um, but the 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 Damashi is like really cool. It's got like this cool like kind of like chunky Obari design, and it's got like a big you know like grip on the gun. Um, like because the gun is like really oversized, so it like can stand and kind of like hold it. Um, I th I I think it's really dope. Um, I mean, I, I got one used for very cheap. I, when I was in Florida, I bought, I think it was like 14 Damashis off of one of my friends for 100 bucks, and the uh, the Double Zeta was in the lot. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde están mis pantalones? Um, ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? <laughs> uh, speaking of Zeta, I have a thing that I'm debating on doing a video on. Um, I got it at Comic-Con, and I haven't opened it yet. Because I love these. I love fixed figurations. So, uh, might, might do a video on that. Might not. But for now, it goes into the, the, the shelf at the bottom of my display shelves that hold all my things that are still in the package, or things that I have, like, 14 of that I don't know what to do with. Because I've got a couple, like, double-sealed MSIAs. I've got, um... Yeah, I've got some, like, old sealed Victory figures that I just have, like, triplets of. And, uh, when Brett and I put up our collection, uh, um, we kind of combined our collections, and we own some of the same items, so... Uh... Do you still do repaint commissions? Yes, I do. Um, I am currently working on a couple private ones for people that contacted me, um, but not. I don't do them like openly as much as I used to. Um, currently, I am well, not currently because all my commissions got put on hold until GBWC is over. But I'm currently, I'm uh, I'm repainting this for one of my old chums that works for Barnes & Noble. And uh, he's paying me handsomely for my services. So, I gotta fix my hair. It's a little, it's a little frizzy today. Um, are those poseable? Uh, so, the fix figs are like... I love them so goddamn much because um, I love Katoki. Uh, they are posable, but very limited. But but the early ones are like statues, like they're they're bricks. The later ones, like the last couple, are actually like more posable than like MSAAs. Like they're they're almost as posable as like Robot Damashis. Um, but they're they're made of like resin and hard plastic, so they're a lot more flimsy. Um, but you can pose them around, like, the, the Full Armor Gundam and the Perfect Gundam, like, the second ones that came out are, like, super, super posable. Um, let me get the Full Armor Gundam just so I can show it off, because he's my favorite. Yeah, like, the Mark II kind of sucks, the new sucks, the Crossbones sucks, but, like, the la the later ones, these ones, they're the good ones, these are all super posable. And uh, Katoki designed them, so you can't go wrong. I have a whole shelf of them, and I am so excited that they... Oh, his legs fell off. <laughs> Shit. I am so excited that uh, they just announced the... Um, uh, the whatchamacallit, the, the Zakus for the uh, the metal composite, the 1 to 100 scale ones. And if you're in my Discord, you'll know about all the latest Gundam news because we have a news tab where we just post, like, news things and no one can comment in it. 
so people know what's coming out. <laughs> and we post everything. So yeah, the fixed figs are cool. Um, the Z, I don't think the Z is very posable. I think it transforms, but I don't think it's like that posable. Um, fixed figures are beautiful pieces for those part. I have a gigantic. Oh yeah, the Psycho Gundam. Oh, that's awesome. I want the Psycho. I love Psycho Gundam. Um, as much as I like, am kind of like a Zeta designs kind of bore me. I love the Psycho. I love Psycho. I love the Mark II. Um, there's like a couple things from Zeta that I actually like really really like, but I can't remember them all off the top of my head right now. Um, Bryant, I like the Bryant. Bryant's cool. Ah, <sighs> so I am making little zombie Zaku heads. Yay! Probably the Methus. Uh, I like the Methus. <laughs> Uh, also, big, big hot take. I do not like the Gabaldi at all. I think it's, like, the most boring mobile suit in existence. I mean, like, I don't, I don't dislike it. I don't really dislike anything from Gundam. But the Gabaldi is just so boring. <laughs> yeah, everybody hates the <laughs> Uh, love the methods, I'm not really sure why. Well, everybody has an opinion on something. Man, this thing is... Not staying in the way I want them to. So yeah, I'm like... I'm building these, again, I showed off the Zaku heads earlier to, like, be on this uh, Fetty cross thing. And I can't remember if I showed this off, <laughs> so I'm going to do it again. Um, so they have these, like, this guy has, like, the chains that are going into his head like this. And they're going to be attached by a magnet. So they can hang like this. And the, the wires, that they're all sticking out everywhere. They're not going to be like that, so don't don't worry. Don't worry, Gundam fans. Uh, well, then again, I'm totally about the high grade five villa. Where did the donor Zaku heads come from? Uh, um, let's see. This one is from this poor motherfucker. Um, <laughs> uh, the other two that I'm working on, uh, K Dash sent them to me, Kevin, um, because I needed them. And he's a good man. Yeah, I have a lot of... Okay, okay, so for example, for used parts, this entire thing back here, if you can see it, this entire thing is uh, all my extra and scrap parts bins um, organized by series, body type, weapons, um, and then the smaller bins that you can't really see over here, but there's a whole stack of them. That's all heads... Hands, thrusters, shields, vents, like specific parts, smaller parts go in there. Um, and again, all the all of these are organized by like series. So I have like a couple Universal Century bins. So like this is an example of like one of my parts bins. That's all just UC parts in there. And then this is all like Wing, Double O, uh, and G Gundam parts are in there. And then I've got like an IBO one. I've got a. This is like this is all uh, build fighters parts, like build fighters kits. Um, and then again in the smaller drawers, this is a. Uh, these are all heads, and these are all hands. So they're all kind of organized neatly and um, into the drawers that they need to be organized in. And. Uh, you know, beam effects are in here. Pilots are in here. Um, <laughs> these are some of my extra polycaps. Um, you require a lot of extra stuff when you've been building for this long. And this is all... Um, these are all, like, semi-complete bodies. Just kind of chilling here. They're, like, 90% complete. Um... And I have, I think, like six, seven drawers of just bodies 
um, and body parts. And then I've got, um, these are work in progress drawers, which are kits that like I've started doing prep work on, or I've done a lot of prep work on, and I just haven't finished them. So they're primed and all of their accessories are labeled and in individual bags. So I can keep track of like what goes to what. So those are all in there. Um, and then, oh yeah, and then I, I have over on, you can't really see them that well, but over on these shelves, I have um, some displayed kits that are, these two shelves are all painted, and then I have two over there that are all unpainted, and I am I keep them separated because I'm intending on painting them someday, and since I, uh, I have them on display, I keep all of the painted or unpainted kit accessories organized into individual bags. So I know like what goes to what, and when the time comes to uh, to paint the model, I can just pull the bag out, and I have every single accessory from the kit in there. Um, and then these are all painted kit accessories that are organized into individual bags. Um, I'm trying to think, if there's anything interesting? Oh, there's like a non a non Bandai pin. Um, this is like one of my weapons parts bins. Uh, this is all like extra guns, swords, weapons, shit like that. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Um, that's jewelry. That's uh, that's these stickers. Shields, clear parts, cams, beam effects. The beam effects drawer is just really pretty. <laughs> I love I love like different beam effects parts. So that's oops, that doesn't fall. That's all uh that's all beam parts. So if you need a beam saber, I got you. Uh, pilot figures, mini kits, real grade parts. These <laughs> these two drawers are all just shields. I think I might move these into like a big drawer because I have so many of them. But that's all shields. Um. And then I've got one for different fence thrusters, boosters, all that sort of crap. But yeah, I did this. I did this like massive clean out uh, when I moved into this apartment with my girlfriend, um, and I took all of the uh, all the stuff. Like I had all these boxes, like literally, like I think it was probably like um, probably over a hundred boxes of just like random parts scattered around into different different bins and drawers. And I decided that I didn't want that anymore and that I really wanted like an organized workshop. So I bought, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. I bought 10 of the drawered ones. Um, so 10 times three, that's 30 different drawers for the big ones. And then for the small ones, that's three, six, nine, 12, 30, 40, 50, 17 drawers for the small ones. So like 47 drawers of parts over there that are all individually organized and cataloged. Um, and then there's a couple. Actually, there's a couple empty drawers for uh, for parts that I haven't yet like labeled yet. But yeah, everything everything is over there uh, organized and uh, ready to go. And then and then when I'm like working on a project like this, um, I'll usually end up like going over there and like just taking a body out and be like, okay, I might use this. And then like I pick a bunch of parts out of the bin. So I was like, okay, I might use all of these. And then they go into a temporary bin, which I guess I'm just gonna start keeping over here next to my desk. So these are all like kits that may have been used for this project, but like may may or may haven't. Um, it's like most of a master grade doll. Uh, high grade bars in them. There's a, the goof in here. Occasionally I will sell off like huge amounts of my parts. Um, I, I sold off, I think, like, 12 boxes of parts, like, a couple of years ago, and I still have all this stuff. Um, what do you do with your empty Gunpla boxes? <laughs> okay, so I have a uh, I have a storage unit, and they're all in my storage unit right now, and I'm deciding uh, what to do with them, because I kind of want to turn them all into, like, a giant Gundam head and, uh, like, construct it somewhere and like give it to somebody like give it to Gundam Planet or something and put it somewhere um but I want to build like a giant like or a giant Gundam out of them something like that 
Um, I was thinking about building like a. Uh, I have I have all the sprues from every kit that I've ever built, <laughs> um, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of them. So, um, yeah, there's there's like an overwhelming amount of them because I I think I've built like close to at least like 800 models since I started doing this 10, 11 years ago. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of sprues and a lot of boxes sitting in my storage unit. Um, yeah. <laughs> Andrew, uh, I sold them like three, two years ago, something like that. Um, and I kind of wish I kept them all now because I'm like, I'm looking around and like my, uh, my parts bins and I was like, I know I had like this kit at some point in my career. Like, where is it? And then I look and I can't find it, and I'm like, I sold it. So, um, yeah. Oh, this is cool. I got this recently. It's one of those little paint tray holder things. Um, very, very, very convenient. Um, Where did I buy that? Um, you can get them on Amazon. I got it for free from somebody. <laughs> um, I got the, I got the big one for free, and then I got a little like baby version, which I don't know where it went. There it is. Yeah, you can buy these like dinky, tiny little baby ones, and these are so like convenient and helpful when you're painting. But you can get them on Amazon. They're called Mr. Paint Stations. Very very helpful. Very cool, Kanye. Thank you. Um, uh yeah they're cool they help cat scratching posts cheaper and bigger yes they are cheaper and bigger but i got this for free and i like them small so thank you <laughs> um yeah oh man i've been on here an hour already wow wow and there's 16 people listening to me fucking babble about shit Welcome, welcome, one and all, to the worst live stream in history. <laughs> An hour I just got here. Wow, welcome, free lunchables. I don't know who you are. Um, so yeah, welcome, uh, the audience members, young and old. Um, if you have any questions for Ed the peasant, I'm I'm available. My owners have let me out of the cage for an hour to answer questions. So I'll be here. Answer them quickly because when I get back, I will most certainly be beaten. Uh, what do you miss the most about the old days of YouTube? Oh man! <sighs> wow, you're gonna get me on a tangent. <laughs> I I miss doing YouTube videos so much. Um, and like I've talked about this before, but I legitimately like miss the old YouTube and like the old days of doing uh, videos so much because I I didn't like care as much, I guess. Um, I went through this like really weird phase where I was like trying to be a perfectionist over everything. And then I realized like everything I make is garbage anyway. So like, why should I care? And then my computer broke, my computer broke again. And like last month I finally bought like a powerhouse computer that I can like edit on and like um, I can like do you know, multiple things on, but, uh, one of the hap legitimately one of the happiest times of my life was when I like started doing my, uh, my YouTube channel and I was running my YouTube channel back in the day. Um, and I was just doing like fun little videos on like dumb shit. And it was like, sometimes I would do transformer videos and sometimes I would do, you know, Gundam reviews or sometimes I'd be like, Hey guys, I just bought a bunch of dumb things. You should look and watch this. Ugh. Um, and I just like, I didn't, I, I put like I put as much effort into my videos then as I did like as I as I could at that age like I was putting in all that I could and I was being like all I could be at that time and I think I think what happened over the years is that like when I made videos I just I, I thought like I'm not being all I can be anymore like I can be I can make better videos or like I can like make better content and then I just like I was so self-conscious about it I stopped um, and 
I, I don't know. I just, I really, I just like didn't want to like talk to the world. I just kind of wanted to make models and like show my emotions and like my feelings to the world, like instead of behind a camera, like through my kits. And I really, I took a long time uh, off from YouTube, like at the beginning, like after I did my, it was like before I even like did my Dom Tropin video um, that like really blew up on YouTube. Uh, I was doing like, I was doing more kits than anything because I wanted I wanted to practice my skills because Henry had just given me all of his equipment and he was like okay like time to step your game up and I was really just trying to um, I was really just trying to like get better at the hobby I guess and like I didn't want to do like videos like I had done before like just stupid little like oh hey I'm outside like with my friend or doing this and blah 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 but. It's like my 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 person won't let myself like upload that kind of video anymore, like lower quality content anymore. And it's like I, I expect like more of myself, I guess, on the channel. But then again, it's like I, I wanna make like little fun videos where I'm not being as serious and I'm not like like the the Mitsuo video that I did the other day. I literally sat down here and I filmed it in like twenty minutes and then I edited it and I went to bed and it was it was great. I love doing that. Um, so I really want to, like, do more Gunplay with Ed episodes, because that seems like everybody really liked those, um, and it was, it was a way for me to, like, spread the knowledge that I have, like, I don't have that much knowledge, um, I think I'm, I'm a pretty mediocre builder, and I don't know that much, but, like, the little bits of things that I do know how to do, and, like, other people don't know how to do, I would love to, like, share with the world, like, how to do that, um, so I want to do like little tutorial videos and I want to do stuff like that, but I miss I miss being carefree. I miss the old YouTube days where it was like it was like I don't know. It was just so much less pressure, and it was because like even though I don't think I'm really that great of a builder now, I I thought back then like I wasn't I wasn't like. I knew I wasn't like I wasn't painting. I wasn't trying. Basically, I wasn't trying to be a better builder. I was just snapping kits and like putting basic paint apps on them. I was like, "Wow, guys, look at my condom." <laughs> I don't know. I, I do miss those days. I really, I really do miss like the simple days of me on YouTube when I was a kid. And I think like it, it doesn't just come with like the days of YouTube because I was a teenager. It was my teenage years, and I was growing up, and I was very carefree, and I was, like, really, really happy with, like, my life, and I just, like, didn't give a shit, and I was, like, I don't have bills. I don't have, like, I was, like, and I was in high school when I was doing YouTube. I'm only 24. I started making videos when I was 14, um, and, well, I think I was, like, 15, actually, but um, regardless, I... Uh, I don't know. I, I like. I just. I guess I didn't expect much from myself because I was like a kid, and making making videos was just fun. And I think it like stopped being fun for me when I realized that like the world expects more from me. I'm an adult. Oh. But every once in a while, I'm gonna like do little videos and like fun stuff again. I'm I'm trying to like teach myself that like you don't have to like make perfect videos and then like I realized that like I don't make perfect videos to begin with I never have so like what standard am I holding myself to and then I'm like well like other YouTubers like make all these videos and they upload stuff like every week or every month and you know they have like millions of subscribers and everybody knows them and then I'm like why even like bother with a YouTube channel but then I'm like you know I want to blah 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 so it's, like, it's, it's a big like mental struggle <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I miss the good carefree days of old YouTube when I didn't hold myself to certain standards. Oh man, there's a lot of comments. Jesus. Howdy. I thought that Discord NVQs were for me. I remember your intro when you climbed out of your window into like your roof. I remember being inspired by your channel at that time. Oh man, I remember those too. I really wish there was a way for me to like get old videos from my old YouTube channel that got deleted, but. Unfortunately, they are they are lost to time. Um, I discovered you through your transient video. I remember thinking that there's no one more deserving of Henry's tools. Oh, thank you. I um, the the whole thing with me and Henry is like this. 
this real real life anime story bullshit because he was like the dude that taught me everything and when he gave me those tools it was like it changed my world and it was like it was so crazy because it was like he was this guy that i looked up to on youtube and i like worshipped the ground that he walked on and i loved all of his models and i i was i was like inspired by him not only because like he was a really great builder but i think what really captivated me <clears throat> captivated me was he was kind um and i think kindness is the thing that a lot of people lose when they rise to a position of a lot of subscribers or a lot of followers and a lot of admi people that admire them and he took he always took the time out of the day to answer whatever's stupid and there were a lot of stupid questions that i asked at 15. um he always took the time out to answer the questions that i had on uh whatever <clears throat> whatever dumb thing it was and i just i remember him being like so nice and patient with me and i think like that was what really inspired me to kind of like I want to make stuff that inspires people and like when they have questions I want to answer them because you were so nice to me you know growing up when I was a kid about it um but yeah Henry Henry is a, a an amazing individual and I'm really like proud to call him my friend because him and I have him, him and I went from master and student to rivals to you know very good friends and um at GBWC when we both like got up on the podium we both got awards together it was like it was this really like magical moment because I, I literally wouldn't have I wouldn't be here without him I, I wouldn't be doing this without him so um that was a very very special uh <laughs> special thing for me when he when he gave them back and it's really funny because um I compared it to the episode of, I know it's like oh this anime is literally me but um I compared it to the episode of Build Fighters when uh Tatsuya and his old buddy were like fighting and um it, it was like the the one I forget his name but the one guy was like I quit Gunpla like I don't want to do it anymore and then he like ended up getting in a fight with Tatsuya and then he's like I love it too much to stay away. And that was like almost word for word what happened with Henry because he got out of it and then he saw like how much all of his friends were like having fun with it and thriving. And he's like, I can't stay away from this. I have to, I have to come back. But I think it's, I think it's healthy. I think it's like good to take breaks from things, especially if you're like as involved with it as some people are. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing, but you know, he kind of stepped back for a while and now he's like better than ever. So you know, everybody, everybody kind of like learns and takes their, their strides at their own paces. And I think sometimes your own pace means you have to stop walking. If that makes any sense. Um, I remember looking up to you so much in Bosies that I can't still hope to see how left. <laughs> oh, cat. Yeah. Add me on Facebook again. I, I, we haven't talked in a while. I don't think I, I don't think we re-added when I made my new Facebook. Um, I also remember looking up to you when I first found your channel, I learned so much from you and I still do. I, I respect you a lot. And just being able to talk to you at times and learn that just is awesome for me. Well, I will, uh, I will talk to you whenever you need, buddy. I, I, you know, again, the, the kindness that Henry gave to me or sorry, the kindness that Henry had and kind of, you know, well, he did give it to me as I was learning and growing up. Um, that really like made me want to be like him. So I want to be, you know, that guy. I want to be that helpful guy. So I know I don't answer every PM that I get, but I try. I try to. Um, way back machine, maybe. Um, I, I don't think that would work, unfortunately, because the channel itself was completely deleted. Um, YouTube just deleted the entire thing, so it doesn't, like, exist anymore. It's not like they unlisted it. It's just like they deleted it, so it's gone. Um, I don't know if the way back works with that, but I could try, maybe. Um, you made 10, 10 out of 10 content. Stay quality. I will, friend. I will make it just for you. Quality beans. Um, hello, Anthony. Yes, that's my sappy bit for the night.
<laughs> See you, man. You know what? I might go play some Minecraft later. I'm not going to play Minecraft. I'm going to sit here all night saying these Aku heads. Mm. Wow, we were up to like 18 followers. Or 18, uh, 18 blocks. Hmm. I don't know how much longer I will stream, but I will keep streaming for a little bit. So if anybody has any more questions, please let me know. Xbox, PS4, or PC. <laughs> um... I, I'm not, like, that big of a video game person. I don't really play video games that often, but um, I play PC games when I do play. Um, I play a lot of TF2. Um, I play a lot of Train Simulator, which is this, like, train simulation game. Um, I do play Minecraft. <laughs> I love Minecraft. Um, I, play, uh, I actually play Overwatch. Every once in a while, and yeah, prepare yourself. I actually play Fortnite with Jeremy sometimes. It's actually like unironically fun when I play with him. So, whatever, sue me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, sure, dude. Send me a PM. That's fine. Um, how much you got left to do, Anthony? Damn it, I chose the Mac route. Oh no, you chose the Mac route. Oh dear. Well, it's still a computer. You still have a computer. I, I just recently bought a new computer, and I love it. I, I love it so goddamn much because it's so fast. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I really love it. It's a it's an Asus laptop, so it's got, like, a solid-state drive. Um, and I don't actually know the specs off the top of my head, but it's got a solid-state drive, and it is very fast. Mm. My phone is buzzing. My phone is doing a buzz. I don't know. Mm, I have notifications. Ah. Oh, it is so cold. It is like... 40 degrees out right now. Uh, my game machine, Asus Tower is going to be on next computer because I'm generally on this one. I actually don't like Windows 10 that much, <laughs> um, but I love my Asus, so I'm, I'm willing to like put up with Windows 10 to have it. I prefer 7. Um, hey, Ed, we need to play that new Gundam Breaker after you see. Yeah, um, I'll buy it eventually. <laughs> I, I do enjoy uh, it, it looks it looks fun. Gonna break it looks a lot of fun, but I don't want to pay like fifty bucks for it. I'm working on my Zeon while watching this. Cool, Zeon is the best. Zeon is a very cool boy. I love my Zeon. Oh. Zeong is like on a rock, one of my favorite mobile suits. Just stop by to say a quick hello. Hope everyone has a nice day. Hello, Sam. Thank you. Um, I don't play much game. Blah, 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 blah. Legs, it's bullshit. It's not worth the full price. Still pretty fun for some Yeah, I, I, I heard that the, the new Gundam Breaker isn't as fun as like the old one. Um, but I don't have a console to play it on because I don't have a PS4. I think I think you get them on one on PS3, but I, I was just gonna like I was gonna buy the the Steam one, but it was like no, don't. It is too pricey. But I don't really care. Second sound wave. What up? Channel Two S Gunplay News and Reviews. I feel like I've heard that name before. Oh man! So I was gonna like take a nap when I got home, and now it's eight o'clock at night, and I don't know like why. Because <laughs> I, uh, 
my, my again i explained this earlier i don't know who's here that heard it but my sleep schedule has been like really messed up the uh the past week because i've been working on gbwc stuff every night um so oh anthony anthony uh you asked me how to do rivets earlier i will reply to you soon i saw it while i was driving and i forgot about it sorry about that um but yes um Ed boy no sleep good. Yeah, you're right. Ed boy do not no sleep good. Ed boy no do wordo goodo. Um, but I've been up every night working on this because I have 20 days left to do it, and I just really want to get it done because the painting's gonna take me a long time. Um, unless I do like a clean build, which I probably am not going to do because I don't do clean builds. Um. Just because that's not how I roll. But uh, sleep, sleep, yes. Have not been having much of it. Um, I have been staying awake working on this, and my sleep schedule mainly is me going to bed at like 5, 6 o'clock when I get home from work, uh, sleeping until about 10 o'clock, and then getting up at 10. and staying up literally all night to work and then going to work when I'm out of work the next day. Or going to work when I'm out of work the next day. Yeah, that makes that that's a sentence, Ed. Um, going to work and then coming home and then sleeping is what I meant to say. Oh, God. Yeah, Banshee. Stop. Fire messaging. Here, I'll mute it because... There we go. I'm sorry. These these are like really loud, so it's gonna carry over to my microphone. It's just hidden somewhere in my bush of hair. Yes. Um. So no work on Jerry. Thanks, Ed. No, no, we got three marks. We got three weeks. You're right. Yes. Bless you, my child. Uh, what's your work anyway? Um, I am. I do so many different things at my job, but my official title is I am the head director and coordinator of social media, and I'm also the head operations manager for a cleaning company in Pennsylvania. But I do like I do like nine other things as well. So It pays the bills. <laughs> I'm trying to get a job with the railroad, though, because uh, the railroad pays, uh, starting pays, like, I want to say 65 k a year, like, upon startup. And within five years, you can end up making, like, uh, I think it's like 156 k as an engineer, something like that. So that's what I'm trying to do. But for now, I'm an office manager. <laughs> it was Banshee's fault. He's a bummer. Uh, -ba -da -ba -da. I do a big old Sando on the Crosso. Yeah, this cross thing is a pain in the ass, but it's necessary for the theme. You can always work with me. I'm, I'm always on Amtrak on Amtrak tracks. <laughs> Are you? Do you work for Amtrak? I didn't know that. Play TF2 with you? Yeah, man, I play TF2 with you. I uh, I main engineer, so I make people really angry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll play TF2 with you. Yeah, probably. Scratch building is very fun. <laughs> I am the rabbit. Crystal Kerm. 
Not on their medical, they work on a track strip. Oh, yo, that's awesome. Um, actually, I, I was considering getting a job with Amtrak. Um, I applied for Norfolk Southern as like a, 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 a entry position conductor for freight services. Um, but I would, I would actually work with Amtrak if, depending, I mean, like, I, I don't really care, like, what company I work for. I just want to work for the railroad. <laughs> I want to work on trains and work with trains and get decent pay. But that's cool. I actually, um, I applied to be a track layer in, uh, Philly, um, to, from Philly to, uh, I forget where, um, somewhere to somewhere. So I've applied, I've applied for several positions for the, uh, the company, but I've been interviewed once. My second interview got moved and, uh, we'll see what happens the next time I get interviewed. Yeah, scratch rolling is pretty cool. Um, I I whipped up this uh, this cross last night like pretty fast. I put I put like a pipe through here and a pipe through here, and then uh, I clamped the middle with a I, I like drilled a hole through it and I clamped it with a metal piece of pipe and glued that in place. And then I took flat uh, flat strips and I glued them on the outside, so it's it's actually like a you can see what I kind of did through the tube there. And I did that on like all the corners. So we'll see what this turns into. Oh man. I will confirm this friend request. Oh, so I should read funny comments that were on the tested video because I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Some of the some of the stuff people were saying. <laughs> um, one guy was like really really upset that Norm called them Gundams, and he's like, uh, "That's a Zeong. That's not a Gundam. Please correct yourself, Norman." And there's another guy that was like. Great work, great dude, great interview, but I fucking hate Gundam. And then there's another guy that was like, I love trains, but I fucking hate Gundams. And it's like, why? Like, what did they do to you? Like, who killed you? Uh, repairing or replacing, they have huge lazy suits that rotate carts. Yeah, yeah, I've seen, like, all the behind the scenes of that stuff. I love it. It's crazy what they do. You should see some of the maintenance on steam engines that they do. It's, like, absolutely nuts. Oh, yes. Washy, washy, wash. Yeah, this is this is going to take me like forever to sand. I should probably just like do this on a on a, like a lazy day at work. Oh, look at how good my arm looks in this light. <laughs> I should probably already said and I should probably know from Discord, but what else do you have to finish for GBWC? Um, okay, so I'm doing a uh, train samurai guy. Um, the body is like 90% done prep wise. There he is. I just got to finish the shoulder. I got to finish the backpack up and I got to finish his other side skirt and like tie. And I got to build his face and he will be done after that. Um, so, and then I got to paint him obviously. And then I have to paint his, uh, his flag here which is going to go into his backpack right here like that. So he's going to have a little backpack thing with a flag. Um, I have a couple different designs that I'm tossing around for that. Um, so that I have to do. And then this cross thing I'm building um, are going to have these like severed Zaku heads like hanging off of it like this. And he's either going to be holding it or it's just going to be like pushed into the ground. Um, and the tree base I have over here, which I haven't flocked yet, but I started uh, putting the putty and spackle on it and sculpting the roots. Um, 
Yeah. So this weekend, uh, the body for the Gundam will be completely done, and I believe I will have paint on it by Monday. So hopefully I can decide a color scheme by then. Um, and I'm hoping by the end of the weekend I can get this cross thing kind of like finalized, like what I want to do with it, so I can like at least get working on it. Um, what else do I have to do? Oh, I have to build this. I have to finish building this little uh, samurai guy that I'm working on. That I, uh, I scratch built, and then um, I think that's it. I, th I think that's really it. Um, the 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 so when I'm building like a diorama or I'm building like any kind of like big gunpla piece, um, I kind of like organize it and break it down into like segments, and then the segments get into like smaller segments. So like the Gundam itself is like the main component, obviously, and then another component is the flag, and then another component is this cross thing with the hanging Zaku heads on it, and then the other component is the base. And I like just try to kind of prioritize and organize like what is most important in order. Um, the Gundam is obviously the most important. If I don't finish the base, that sucks, but the Gundam is the thing that I'm working on the most, and that's like the main attraction. So the Gundam is the most important. Then I would say the base and then the flag and then this is probably last priority because if I don't do this, it'll suck, but um yeah. <coughs> uh yeah, so uh damn you work quick yes i do i do work very quick because i don't sleep during gbwc i inhale caffeine even though it really doesn't affect me that much um i drink five hour energies and nos and i've probably done permanent damage to my liver but you know what it's worth it because i make cool shit so um <laughs> i'll pick it up at seven. <laughs> uh I'll make you one for if you if if you can if you can match the offer that I got on Steam Siege, I'll make you one. <laughs> but I don't think anybody in their right mind is gonna match the offer that I got on it. Um uh, nice work as always, man. I'm still stupid impressed with the samurai guy. Thank you. Um I have his swords somewhere, but I don't want to show them off yet because they're not done and I'm like really excited about doing the swords. Um you can just be distracted with it. I'll grab it. 99 cents. Ha 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 You are so funny, Andrew. I remember you telling me about the hours you were pu pulling for Steam Siege. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, during Steam Siege, I was literally, like, I called in I called in at work, and, like, my boss is, like, really cool with me. Just, like, I, my, my job is, like, I can leave whenever I want. Um, so I was just kind of like, hey, I'm taking, like, the next two days off. I was like, why? I was like, well, I didn't sleep last night. I was like, oh, so you need to recover? I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I'm planning on not sleeping again, and I just need to be here. <laughs> um, it's important. So that was big. I, it's really funny because um, I, I got flown out to Vegas for work um, during the last, like, basically, like, right around now before um, uh, before GBWC last year. And, oh, my God, stop messaging me. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, I was, oh yeah, so I was in Vegas, um, and they flew me out there for like a week for work, and I brought like all my weathering stuff and all of my kit components with me because whenever I wasn't at my my work priority, I was in Las Vegas in my hotel room, like working on Steam Siege that entire time. Um, so there wasn't like, I didn't have a day off. Uh, you, you don't get days off when you're like crunching like this. Like I've, I've been working every single day on this for like a week straight. I'm like, I'm tired, but I can't lay down yet because I need to like, I need to get this like rivet set done on the leg or I need to get these parts scratch built and set so the glue can cure overnight. And it's like, I set these kind of mini deadlines for myself and I will not rest if I don't have that deadline done that day. So it's like, if I say I need this part done before I fucking go to bed, I will make sure that I get it done before I go to bed. And I like try to be disciplined with that because if I don't and I fall behind, then I'm fucked and I'm playing catch up. And then I have to do it the next night and it makes me even more tired because I'm up later. So um, I try to kind of like set little daily goals for myself and like get them done. And I try to surpass them and do even more uh, than what I had planned. Like today, 
I actually um, planned on going to bed as soon as I got home because I was so tired, but I somehow got this like wave of energy and I decided to work on this a little more. So here the fuck I am. Um, because I, I really do want to get it done because I've never not finished one of my GBWC projects and I would like to be letting myself down if I did that. So um, I'll pay you in food. You know, Spanish food. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Take me to Kulu. I'll build you all the fucking steam engine robots you want. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, oh, there's so much dust. Yeah, I'm hoping I get this done. I have people that I need to impress this year. Uh, I got people that I can't let down, so I will keep building. Plus, Kevin's coming back, and somebody's got to kick his ass, right? Uh, do you have a Sazabi? Um, which Sazabi? There are many Sazabis. Um, and Andrew, I am wet sanding. This is full of water. I keep dipping like my stuff in there. Um, I already know Kevin's gonna freaking win. May as well call it a no. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna throw it in. Kevin and I. Kevin and I are gonna battle it out. I'm not letting him win easy this year. Now, Kevin. Kevin's awesome. I love Kevin. He's an awesome dude. Um. Put a lot of putty on this. I've got to, uh, I've got to like add more putty in some spots and like take a bunch away in others. And that's coming apart. So that's gonna get some blue. I actually have to go buy some super glue at the 7-Eleven near my house soon. Uh, I will probably get dinner while I'm over there as well. Because I'm out of the uh, multiple tubes that I have at my desk. So, rip. Do you still use Milliput? Yes. I do. I love Milliput. It's right here. I don't know, Kevin Kevin told me to come, you know, to to do good things and give him a give him a run for his bunny, so that's what I'm planning on doing. I have I have faith. I have faith in myself that maybe, maybe I can go up against him and come out victorious. But you know what? It, even even if I don't like place this year at GBWC, because again the categories are kind of weird. So like the only thing that I could possibly win is like best in show. Um, but even if I even if I don't place, I'm gonna make a cool train samurai robot. That I'm really happy about so. It, it is not all about winning. It's about having a cool Gundam to take home at the end of the day. Hi, Flynn. Hey, man, what's up? Welcome to the worst stream in history. Starring Edward. And I can't find the sandpaper. There it is. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Anthony, I feel the same way. It's it's uh it's very it's very cool when people see your work and uh, they like it. My favorite thing is when people like see
see uh see something and they're like oh man like i want to do that or like i i want to go try and do that and like that, that i think that's really cool like when you motivate people and they want to like go try what you did but i think it's even more cool when you can like find a way to like teach them and say you can do this like you can go out and do you know whatever it is that you're inspired by so I want to do this for the children. There's so much putty on here. Uh, so what? So Banshee, Andrew, whatever. I know you are doing the Zeong, and Anthony, you're doing the Jag Doga, which is cool. Um, Kevin's doing his little wound wart guy. Um. I'm trying to think of, like, uh, Ray's doing his Hazel. I'm trying to think of, like, who's doing what this year. Um, is he really doing the one work? I mean, I thought he was. Maybe he's. Maybe he changed his mind. The last update he made that he was working on the one work for it. He sent me a photo of uh, the Zaku heads before he mailed them, and the wound war was in the background. So I was assuming that was what he was doing, but maybe he changed his mind. Uh, little of things massive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not little. It's it's a very big, uh, big hazel. So. I really gotta, gotta get like one of those cameras. Um, oh yeah, I gotta get one of those like overhead cameras. And actually, you know what? I have I have software that lets me like hook a DSLR up as my webcam. Um, I'm thinking like the next time I do a stream, I should do that. Yeah, um, Anthony, I wanted to tell you, your Jag Doga is looking really cool. I really love the uh, the gun mods that you did to it earlier. It looks really good. I'm excited to see it in person. Oh, oh yeah, Strider's got his little... Is a striker thing. Yeah, it's good to take your time. Fortunately, I was stupid and I waited till the last second to work on mine. And still have the audacity to think that I might place when I don't even have the thing finished. We'll see. We'll see what I get on. We shall see. I'll try to make it better than last year's in a way. I learned a lot from the uh, the project I did last year. This thing's like really solid. Like I feel like I could like chuck this and it would be fine. <laughs> It was like really flimsy last night when I was putting it together, and I wasted a lot of milliput trying to do something else with it. But I 
Oh yeah, yeah, you guys don't have European GPU same but Speaking of Europe, I'm going back to Europe. Um, I'm not sure when exactly, but my my best bud and I have decided we are uh, we're gonna go back and uh, explore. So I would uh, I would like to see anybody who's out there if you're willing to meet up. Uh, yes, I will go down to London, probably. Um, I'm gonna go to York, for sure, so I'm, I'm sure I'll be near London. Um, he just ships his entry to Australia. <laughs> Oops. See, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Now the end split a little bit, but whatever. Nothing a glob of super glue won't fix. All right, I'm bored sanding this thing. I'm going to take a break from this. Oh. So. I'm going to get more comfortable. Two people left as soon as I did that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, it's been almost two hours, and I don't know why most of you have been in here this long because I think I am probably the most boring fucking person to do pod or uh, uh, to do a uh, live streams with. Because I just don't know how to talk to nothing. Um, so, if you guys have any questions before I go leave to eat food, um, let me know, and I will answer them. And yeah, I don't. I, I, I gotta decide. I have to decide what I want for dinner. Hmm. I think I want seven. Yes. Do 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 do. 
Have you done a hanger before? Um, I'm just waiting to get drunk in an hour. I, I honestly, I want to just have a night of drinking, but I can't with this project. I have to finish it. Um, yeah, so... Uh, hangers, hangers, no. Um, the only hangers I've done are in the bedroom when I'm putting my coats away because I put them on hangers. <laughs> uh, no, I've never done like a hanger base or anything. I, ha I have like one that I snapped a long time ago, but I did a couple photos with it, but there was, a, there was nothing like crazy about it. Uh, you're still not, why aren't you doing your base? Do your base, get it done. You're not going to enter the Zeong another year. You want to enter it with the base. So do your base. Go to your base. Um, like, t take take this this time you have before GBWC and do GBWC stuff, and then when it's over, you can just do whatever the fuck you want. So go make your base. Um, but no, I've never I've never done a hanger uh, in my life. What's the most prized kit that you own? Ooh, that's a that's a cool question. Um Okay, so like that I have built, like that I've made or that I haven't on you know, like built or unbuilt, or like a kit that someone else gave me. Cause I have a lot of friend kits. Um either. That is a very difficult question. <laughs> um, fuck. Well, I love my Grimgird. I did my Grimgird a little while ago, and I love that thing. I really love my high grade RX that I did. Um. I love the, um, I, uh, probably most of you guys know who Moki Plamo is. Um, I own a bunch of his kits. Um, this is one of my favorite things that I own that he gave me. Um, it's one of my favorite things that I own in general. I, uh, I bought this privately off of him. It was the Astaroth that he made, um, I think like a year ago, um, Yeah, it's it's been over a year since he made this, but I love Astroth. Astroth is my favorite IBO suit. Um, I love that one, and I love this one that he also sold me uh, privately. He didn't list anywhere. It's the uh, the Verka Gundam that he made, like the very first one. If you can be shielded by the light for a second. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, I love 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 this thing. Um, this is like my 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 favorite Gundam design is the Verka, so that one is a big favorito. Um, I'm not gonna pull it out of the shelf because it's like really fragile, but I have a uh, a crossbone that Tim Alexiel gave me. He uh, he used to work for Bluefin, and it's a it's a master grade crossbone full cloth, and the cloth is all painted in like space metallic stuff. Um, and it's really cool looking. Um, I love that thing. Um, Fug, there's a lot. <laughs> um, oh, oh, Andrew gave me this fucking thing. Uh, my 1 to 60 scale clear Exia. I love that shit. Um, that's like one of my favorite kits. It's up on my on my clear shelf. Um, really love the Moon Gundam. But my fa favorite kit... You know, honest, honest to God, it's it's probably this, and I haven't even built it yet. Um, and I don't. I'm I'm gonna take like a resin cast of it before I do it. It's the original one to one hundred scale B Club Crossbone X3 with all the joints, and it's an original first cast of it. Um, love this thing. Um, the box art's really cool, and yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey Dan, what's up, dude? <laughs> yeah, I, I love this fucking thing. I um, I gotta cast it before I build it, but uh, that's probably like my favorite unbuilt thing that I have. I've also got like a a one to 
one. No, I don't know what scale this is. This is a. Uh, this is another B club one that I have that I haven't done yet. It's one to two hundred and twenty scale. That's uh, it's a Zeong and one to two hundred and twenty scale. I love that thing. A really cool box art too. Uh, and then I have uh, I have like the Seven Eleven Gundams. I really love like dorky little novelty kits like that. So I really love the whole like Seven Eleven collection thing I have going on. Um, these are cool. Um, these aren't like main main kits, but uh, for a while there was these Gashapon lines. I guess they're Gashapon, but uh, you could buy miniature model kits um that were basically just scaled down versions of the real things and they came in these like tiny little boxes and it's like a legit actual kit inside there like you make and it comes with like tiny versions of the instructions um and i have i actually have um one that i i almost finished over here uh this is the dom and this is the yang and this dom you can see uh, I primed it already and fixed the seam lines, but they're just literally tiny versions of the old kits. I just think that's really cool. Um, these, I think, uh, I, I the last time that I saw these for sale was on Hobby Wave, and Hobby Wave is dead, so I don't know. Oh, oh, I have a really cool thing, Dan. If you're still in here, um, Dan gave me this, and I love it. It's one of my favorite things, and I'll never build it. Because I have a, I have a new version of it, but this is really cool. Um, I, again, I collect like weird Gundam shit, and this is awesome. Um, so this is a original print of the original Zeong model kit. This was the first run that they, I think the first run they ever did of it. And if you see the Bandai logo in the corner is like the really, really old one. And uh, the box is actually, um, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's stapled together. It's, this was before they even glued the boxes. Um, it's a very, it's a very, very first print and it's all sealed with the original instructions and everything in there. So um, I'll never build this because I have the reprint that they did of it in the normal, like, normal box uh well it's it's the same box art it's the same everything it just has the updated uh bandai logo or whatever that is but this i thought this was like really really cool um yeah you can see on the corner there the original one yeah so and dan gave me this i think for my birthday or something thanks buddy i love this thing. <laughs> i uh this is like the only model kit that i have displayed in my collection on a shelf instead of it just being in my backlog in my closet is I think that thing is so damn cool. Um, now you got me on a, a hunt. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really love the... Uh, oh, oh, this is also really fucking cool. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, at Anime NYC last year, uh, they premiered the Gundam Thunderbolt uh, Bandit Flower movie in English. And they had a special thing where um, you could uh, go to a concert. And it was like all the, the female singers from the, the movies and the, uh, uh, the, the head pianist, the head composer, and the head drummer from like the soundtrack were there and it was like a it was like a two hour long like live show and you had to pay extra to get into uh like the vip section for that which was like the front row seating and if you bought the vip pass um you got to uh do a meet and greet with the uh the the all of them like the composer and the the female singers the drummer and the uh the pianist and i didn't buy that and i was kind of like i was like kind of bummed out because like when i went there and i was like at the concert and everything and like seeing uh thunderbolt like on the big screen i thought it was so cool and i was like man like i really should have bought that like premium pass so i could go get an autograph and 
Uh, Bluefin was selling these, and this is the clear Atlas Gundam. It's like it's molded in a clear plastic. It's just the regular Atlas, but it has the cool uh, the cover of the movie on it. And they were selling like eight of these, and I went up and I, I made sure that I bought one, and I got some for my friends. Um, and uh, I came back down. The movie was over, and people were like lining up for the meet and greet thing. And I was like, man, like, shit, like, I really wish I'd done that. And literally, as I was saying that, I got a message from my friend, George, and he's like, yo, where are you? And I was like, oh, I'm just, like, leaving the Thunderbolt thing. He's like, come to the autograph line, like, right now. And I, like, I go outside, or I go out the uh, into the, auto, the, 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 the hallway where everybody's lining up, and the line was, like, 400 people long. I'm not, like, exaggerating. It went down the hallway. Like, this was at the Javits Center. It went down the hallway, like, near the food court and wrapped around the corner. My friend was third in line, and he pulls me over to him, and he just hands me an autograph ticket. And I'm like, where did you – like, what? And he's like, I have an extra one. He's like, take it. And I was like, holy shit. Like, thank you. Like, this is so cool. Um, How would you get this? And he's like, I bought the vinyl because they were selling vinyl records of the Thunderbolt soundtrack there. And he's like, I bought the vinyl, and they gave me another ticket because I bought the vinyl. So I figured I'd give it to you, and you can get something signed. So I went in, and I met the composer, the two female singers, the pianist and everything. And I got them all to sign the box. Um, and all their signatures are wrapped around the Atlas Gundam in this really kind of cool way. So this is one of my most treasured things, because that was like, that was one of the coolest days. <laughs> um of my life like meeting all those guys it was really cool um so this is one of my favorite things that i own because um i love thunderbolt music i love it like so 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 much and the fact that they like they all signed it there and uh for mr jordan neidert from i forget his name but it's on here but yeah the, the two female singers at the top and the drummer and the pianist are down below but that is, uh, this is one of my pride, pride and joys. I love this thing. Um, very cool, very cool stuff. Oh, you know what? Speaking of that, <laughs> when I went to uh, Oticon, I got a, uh, I got a lot of stuff signed at Oticon. Um, I got this signed by, um. This was signed by Maneva's voice actor, who just, she honestly just sounds like Maneva when she talks. Like, she doesn't put on an, an air for the character. She just sounds like Maneva naturally, which I thought was really cool. So that's signed by Maneva. Um, this is signed by Angelo Sapper's voice actor. Uh, really cool, really funny guy. Um, so I met the two of them at Oticon. Um, this is a postcard set that I'm trying to complete with signatures. This one's signed by the director of Unicorn. Um, and this one is signed by Marita's English voice actor. She signed it in the corner. Um, I think those are the only two I have signed out of these so far. Yeah, and then I got... This one's actually funny. If you're a fan of Thunderbolt, you'll probably enjoy this. If I can find where I put it. Oh, where did it go? I just had it the other day. Oh, there it is. Um, <laughs> I uh, I got this signed at the um, at Oticon, yeah, um, because EO's voice actor was there too. Um, <laughs> that's the project and your trained fellows. They're good. Um, bye, Andrew. Have fun getting drunk. This was signed by uh, EO's voice actor, and you can't really read it, but it says, hey, peg legs on it, because I thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, EO, EO's voice actor was a really funny, cool dude as well. Um, so, But yeah, um, to, to go back to your original question that I went off on a fucking tangent about, my, my one of my most... One of my favorite things that I own is probably that clear Atlas Gundam that's signed by all the voice actors, or all the uh, the uh, um, musicians, and the old, old, old Zeong that my good pal Danny Gumpla gave me that I love. Actually, you know, I should put that on display, the, uh, the signature Atlas kit. Ugh, all right. 
let's see. Uh, how's the progress on your train, fellas? Uh, it's only one train, fella. But uh, I've showed it off a couple times. But there he is. Uh, I need to finish the shoulder and the backpack and his side skirt and give him hands and then he and a face and then he's done. And I'm working on the flag, which I need to paint still. And I'm working on the the cross thing with the Zaku heads. And um, I'm working on the tree. And that's where I'm at with it. <laughs> to give you this, this the quick answer. Um, why was Kelly Laser not in Dead Division? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, technically, I mean, technically, Thunderbolt's not canon, I guess, so. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. uh, Thunderbolt's so damn good, but no more side of the Thunderbolt kit. Um, yeah, they, uh, they canned the third movie, because, uh, Bandit Flower, despite a lot of people actually liking it, it did really poorly. Um, which is unfortunate, so. Uh, that sucks. <laughs> I really wish that they hadn't done that because I love Thunderbolt so much. Well, and, and also they're like the the part that's in like part three of uh, Thunderbolt. If you read the books, it's very boring. It's a lot of talking. So I think what they're doing is they, since Bandit Flower did so bad, they don't want to release the boring, you know, next chapter of the story like immediately. I think they want to like let it let it ride for a little bit and then they'll do it. I'm praying that they continue it because I I love Thunderbolt. <laughs> like Thunderbolt, I I just watched it the other night for like the tenth time. Like I I love December Sky so much. Hey, it's the guy who doesn't drink milk. That's me. I hate milk. Milk's gross. Sorry, I tell the facts here. Playing jazz. Yes, is that because it was on cliffhanger? Yeah, it did leave on a cliffhanger. Um, if you read the manga, you can figure out what happens, but that implies that you know how to read, which I don't. <laughs> Just kidding. I love that a camera's perspective. Thanks. Um, it's temporary and last minute, and uh, my this is off my webcam. Um, hopefully in the future. I will uh, be filming in daylight so that I can, because there's a window right here. So I can open that up and uh, breathe some light into the situation that is this live stream. But right now it's 8 o'clock at night. And I live in Pennsylvania, so it's dark already because it got dark at 6. Um, yeah, so. Huh, I feel bad because like, pe people, like, new people keep coming in. And I'm like, uh, I might leave soon and get dinner. <laughs> But I feel bad. Uh, Bong <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to see what they did with that Psychozaku parts. Um, yeah, the the Psychozaku gets like turned into a, like a new Zaku thing, and the monks like the monks fly it around and blow stuff up and shit. I don't know. Claudia is alive and she's brainwashed and it's a it's a great time for Eo. He has a really nice time. He doesn't. I also am like really sad that Band of Flower did really poorly because they most definitely had <laughs> prototypes for the Aqua Gun Cannon and the like Aqua Gyms and the um, the Goof. And they just didn't release them because it did so poor. <laughs> I'm really sad about that. So. Thunderbolt God. Yeah, I think I think they were gonna do the Ark guys too. I also really love the little Ark guy song that they sing. Oh, well, they don't sing it, but the, the act guy song that plays in the background. They're like little fat bears rock, running around with their backpacks. Kawaii, 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 wah, wah, wah. 
I think I'm 12. Kawaii, kawaii. Beto kono kawaii. Oh, so there's this part in um uh Thunderbolt in the second movie. Um and <laughs> so Carla, if you don't know, um Carla gets like traumatized at the end of the first Thunderbolt movie. And in the second movie, uh she's lost she's like lost her mind because she's like she went into shock and she basically like suppressed her her thoughts and she thinks she's like 10 or something like that like 12 and um she she like um she's like walking around with uh with peg legs there and like they're in like a hollow chamber or something and she says something like oh like thank you daddy and like that that term wouldn't be nearly as bad as it is nowadays. <laughs> like a couple years ago, uh, it wouldn't be that bad. But like she said that in the movie theater, and like everyone was like, "Oh my god, oh what?" And then like a minute later, they're like, "No, no, no!" Like she thinks she's twelve. It's not like that. And everyone was like, "Oh, okay, okay." <laughs> it was just so funny because like as soon as she said that, the entire theater was like. <laughs> Um, Daryl, Daryl, yes, Ensign Daryl. All right, I guess he's not Ensign anymore. Colonel, Colonel Daryl, whatever. Uh, did you see the new anime figures on the Tamashii Nation event? Yes, I did. Oh my god, I want to fuck the GPO one. Um, uh, <laughs> I I'm so happy that they're finally doing GPO one. Um, I I was watching Stardust the other day, and I, I was talking about this earlier in the stream, but I was watching about it and uh, I tweeted like, oh man, like watching Stardust, like really wish uh, Tamashi would release that prototype GPO one that they teased like seven years ago. And then two days later, they dropped it. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> the figure, yeah, the figure looks really good. Um... Yeah. I don't know why I've been sanding this part for like three hours. It's literally like not going to be seen. <laughs> Whatever. Do you ever just want to like light everything on fire and never go to GBWC again? Because <laughs> I'm kind of there right now. I will prevail, though. Get in there. Go on, get in there. There you go. Uh, greetings, uh, Strictly Mecca. Mai, is that you? I think, I think that's you. Uh, count, yeah, the count looks really good. Um... They need to make Blossom. Oh my god, I wish. <laughs> hey, Larry, what's up, dude? <laughs> oh, man, I haven't talked to you in a while. Um, yeah, yeah, I, they, they do need to make Blossom. Um, I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll make, like, GPO3 in Blossom. And you know what? You know what I bet they'll do? I bet that they'll make a chunk of the Dendobrium. Like, not the whole thing, but I bet they'll make, like, a section of it. Um, like they did with the uh, the Neo Zeong for uh, the the Sanaju. I can see them doing that. A re a re what a re Dendobrium? Oh man. Okay, I I think. Oh, excuse me. I think we'll get a we're gonna get a high grade Zamel. Um, Stardust's like or no not Stardust. Um. What's it called? Uh, War in the Pockets anniversary is next year, and uh, we're we're getting something. <laughs> we're getting something interesting. That's all I know. 
So I'm, I think a lot of people will be happy. Reblossom would be awesome. Ah. Well, I think I'm going to go get some food um, in a minute here. But if you guys have any more questions you want to ask before I leave, uh, you can go ahead. I may stream again later. I There was just like a feather floating around. Um, <laughs> I may stream later, um, and I will put up the links like I did this time if I do. Uh, so if there's anything you'd like to know, speak now or hold your peace until the next live stream. You're making a revive, Alex, so that's cool. That's dope. Peace, homie. I think, uh, yeah, I think that the, not the churros, the, um, what do they call them? The, the the rollers over at 7-Eleven are calling me. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess uh, that'll wrap it up. I had a fun time with you guys, um, and I will definitely do these again. I like I like uh, I like streaming. Um, I want to do another one where like you guys can just see the workspace instead of me, because I'm sure that's a lot more entertaining than my face. So one of these days, I will, uh, I will, I will definitely uh, just do a stream where I'm like on the table, looking at things. And until next time, Gundam Saise says, "Bye bye." <laughs> Needs hands. There we go. Be a good boy and stand up. All right, guys, um, that is it. I'm going to take off now. Nice seeing you all. Peace and love and all that jazz. Where is the stream button? Where the hell is that? Oh, there it is. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>